All right, everybody, welcome back to a new Python tutorial. And today we're gonna take a look at the Keras CV library. It is a new library which came out, I think, at the end of last year. And it allows for object detection. And we're gonna go through a code snippet here and take a look at how it works. So basically, this code is from the Keras documentation. So it's not my own code, just to mention that. So you can also look it up there. So uh, at first you need to install the packages in case you haven't. And in my case, I'm using Google Colab for that. You can see that you just run upgrade Keras CV and upgrade Keras uh, because you upgraded to the latest version of Keras, which in this case is three. Then I ran into an issue that uh, the TensorFlow version is not uh, proper for the three versions. So I also upgraded TensorFlow for doing that. I uh, currently commented it here out, but you probably should do that as well. And then uh, I just import a few dependencies, operating system module, um, tfdata, tfds, and so on. And also very important, this bounding box in visualization in order to visualize then your final result later on. And then I downloaded a pre-trained model, which in this case is a Jolo V8 detector. You can also create your own model and you can also of course fine tune a model, but in this case I'm, I'm using just the base model, which in this case is this one here, just to try it out and figure out whether it works for my own image. Uh, so you download it, it shouldn't take too long uh, in Google Colab because the internet is quite fast. And then you specify a file path. Now, by default, there was uh, from the documentation um, a Keras um, utils library, which actually extracts images from uh, websites, but this didn't work for me. So I ran into an issue there, um, but uh, there wasn't a problem because I decided to use my own image, which in this case is a Dragon Ball image. And I just need to give it a file path here. You can just upload your own images in here uh, with this, this button here and then uh, you can just reference uh, the image itself. If you want to know the file path, you can also go there and just copy the path from here. Just paste it in here, it's the file path, and you can load the image in here. And then you can visualize the image, uh, which is in this case, this one, and you see that this is my Dragon Ball image. So you can see a few persons in here, so Goku, Krillin, and so on. And uh, this actually happens here twice, um, that's just based on the image. And then you can do uh, some kind of inference um, but before you do this, you can see it here, you need to resize the image. So um, the, the default models need uh, to have the image a specific size, right? So you need to size it in the right format. And um, you can see it here, it's also padded just in case the size didn't work for the default image you're gonna use. And then you just batch it. So it just means that you just shape it in the right shape. And uh, it's also here in a list format. And then you specify class IDs here, which I tried to also include turtle here, for instance, because there's a turtle. Um, and uh, also a lot of uh, default ones, which also came from the documentation itself. And then there's just a uh, dictionary creation. So uh, zip the range of the class IDs and the class IDs. So basically these, uh, all these values get a number. So that turtle is zero, bicycle is one and so on. So just um, mapping basically from the, the classes itself to IDs. That's what happened here. And then it's stored in a dictionary. And then you just do um, a predict function with the pre-trained model, which in this case is uh, Jolo 8. And then you save the predictions. And then of course you want to visualize it in the image itself. And that's why uh, you're gonna use this visualizing, uh, visualization um, library, which you imported at the beginning. And just specify here uh, the default settings here. And then you can see that this is the result I got. So I scroll down here a little bit. You can see that that is the output by the default model, you have to say, right? Um, you can see that uh, it recognizes these uh, people as persons, persons, but for instance, also here, that should actually be a total and it's a person in here. And uh, so that didn't pick this up for instance, um, but for other ones, it's quite good. Here, for instance, I don't, I'm not sure why she is a dog actually, uh, but you can also see that the probability that she's a dog with 0 0.51 is pretty low. Um, so obviously um, the YOLO model was not, so the default model was not able to detect her as a person as well. But of course, um, the results might vary based on the images you're gonna feed to the model, uh, but in this case, that's what I got. And you can see that uh, even though it did not classify everything, for instance, Bulma wasn't classified here, but it still was able to recognize a lot of persons in here, uh, for instance, here, Yangchu and so on. So that went actually pretty good. So that's it actually for this video. It was just an introduction to this Keras CV library. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff out there, also of course in the documentation, but if you wanna see more in a video, then of course, let me know. If you want to see other kinds of things, also let me know, share your comments. Um, and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have not done so far, please subscribe to the channel and let me know what you wanna see. So take all the best and see you in the next video. Until then.